So hi guys, today I'm gonna be showing you how I did my digital portrait. So I'm gonna be sharing you my process and how I did it my way. And I'm gonna be sharing you some tips. I'm just also a beginner artist when it comes to digital art. I haven't made much digital arts lately but I'm going to share this because I believe that artists really learn from each other and there is no limit to learning every day. Every day we grow and we improve as we practice so we just help each other out. So in this video I'm gonna be giving you five tips that made me sane while doing this digital work so as you know digital work is really troublesome because aside from the back pains shout out to during tab gang well it's really time consuming first tip I'm gonna give you is take your time like I said digital art is really time consuming so don't rush yourself just take your time don't really rush anything because you have all the time in the world it could take you days and just take your time I guess the most basic question is what brush do you use well it doesn't really matter what brush you use guys as long as you're comfortable using the brush as long as that brush fits your style then go for my brush well I just use the simple hard round brush for the line art and for the coloring I used soft pressure round opacity so if that will help you guys you can try out those brushes but I'm telling you choose your own brush as long as you're comfortable with it you don't need fancy brushes but I also respect those people who use fancy brushes that's also good next for the line art I suggest that you just make confident strokes don't hesitate to control alt Z button which is undo because in digital art boy you can do those limitless you can erase non-stop all your mistakes so don't be afraid to commit mistakes don't forget to create those useless lines don't forget to make a mess like the line art don't think of it as it is something to be perfect it doesn't need to be perfect as long as it gets the shape the basic shapes the outline of what you're going to do that's good get the general vibe of the reference and don't think that it has to be perfect next tip is to be confident like I said don't be afraid to make mistakes and always believe that you're gonna finish your work so even if your work does look muddy at first don't give up okay that's part of the process and be confident with it be confident that at the end of the day you will finish this piece and you will be proud of it because if you're not confident enough then you won't be proud of your work and if you're not proud of your work then how can others be proud of your work you must be the first one to encourage yourself if you need to take breaks in between then do it don't force yourself if you're not in the mood do it if you want to sleep do it next tip is a very important tip I learned this from Ethan Becker it is that you need to draw to fail so it's not every day that we get to achieve what we want to achieve when we draw we know that we are drawing but it is not perfect so we spot on those errors we see how we went wrong we investigate how to make it better the next time so draw to fail but when you fail spot those failures and turn them into success spot the bad things and turn them into good things next time because every day is a chance for us to grow every day is a chance for us to improve okay next tip is that there is no original work it's just innovations so don't be afraid to use references because it is okay it is very okay to use references we use references to be inspired so we can be able to innovate our own style our own making our own identity there is no such thing as original idea because these ideas are floating around and it's just waiting for you to pick them up you see artists you follow artists on instagram and twitter everywhere and be inspired in their work take their works as references and create your own identity research be inspired innovate create your own identity this is also a tip from Ethan Becker so you guys should really check him out on YouTube 
he does great art and he gives very great advice too. Now let's go to the technicalities. So basically what I do with my work is that after the line art and after I am satisfied with the basic shapes and if I finally decided that I got the general look of the reference, I start with a base color. In choosing the base color, you just choose a plain color and use hard round brush. Before you add the shading, the highlights, the contour, and everything, there must be base. And since we are doing a digital portrait with a reference that we have to copy, you can just simply use the eyedropper tool. So the shortcut for the eyedropper tool is I. You need to click letter I in your keyboard, get that eyedropper tool, and just pick the color you want. Next part is the shadows and the blending. So basically, this is my most favorite part because it really shapes your art. This is where you get so excited because you finally get to decorate it with the contours and everything. So just like traditional art, after the base, you need to blend it with the shadows and the highlights. In order to do that digitally, I just use the soft round pressure opacity brush. So that brush is really soft. Well, for me, I don't know if it works on you, but for me, that's what I use. It's so soft and it blends so quickly. And with the help of the eyedropper tool, you just pick those colors and blend them and just make it soft, blend it until it gets soft. Just like what I'm doing here, I'm just trying to pick the color from the reference, apply it in my own workplace. And if it is too rough, then pick another color that is close to it and then try to blend them both. And also, don't forget if you're using a drawing tab, turn on the pressure opacity, the print pressure, and the airbrush effect because it helps so much. They're located below the window and the help buttons. It really makes the overall look soft and so easy to manipulate and blend. Now, maybe you're all asking what about the details, what about the eyes, what about the lips that requires lines and thinner, thinner blending or thinner coloring because the cheeks they're pretty soft they're pretty scattered so what happens to the lips with the thinner and finer details so what i do if i want finer details is that i turn off the pressure opacity this will leave the brush with less smooth lines less scattered lines also guys don't forget to separate the layers because separation of layers makes it easier to edit so there must be a separate layer for the base, separate layer for the line art, and separate layer for the shading. As you progress with your work, don't forget to zoom in and zoom out to, you know, compare. See the bigger picture of the reference and compare it to your work. Next, a couple of people asked me how I do the eyes because the eyes seem so alive and so detailed. I just really think that in every artwork, especially when you're drawing faces, eyes is the most important thing. Eyes is the window to the soul. Even if it's just an artwork, I want it to speak to the audience through its eyes. So the way I do detailed eyes is just, I just really copy the reference, but the way I copy it, I just really do blending a lot until I make an accurate copy of the reference. A step by step, I just really pick the color from the reference, recreate the eyeball, and like what I said, if I were to make more solid colors and not soft, I just turn off the pressure opacity pen. I also make a base for the eyes, which is the darkest color. Next to the darkest color, I choose the second dark color. It's like darkest, darker, and dark. After the darker color, I use the dark. And finally, I use the highlights. Now what makes it smooth like a glass effect? It's actually the finishing touch I do. The airbrush effect that I just brush through the eyes to make it soft. 
What you have to do is turn on all three, pen pressure opacity, the airbrush effect, and the pen pressure. Next, pick the lightest color, the highlight, or most likely, the lighter brown in this case. And next, change the palette. Don't follow what you pick in the reference. After you pick it, you make it lighter. Don't use the original color for the eyes, make it lighter. This also applies to other elements that needs details just like nose and lips. So if you want to have details to your lips, if you want to make it glossy, just pick the color and change its hue. Don't change its opacity, it's one of the common mistakes. Don't change the opacity, just change the hue, not the opacity. And finally, we have come to an end to this video. And I just want to share to you my last tip and hopefully you all remember my four tips. Credits to Ethan Becker for the two of them. Now this one is my very own mantra in life and I've always been using it ever since, I don't know, high school. It's just that don't compete with others, compete with yourself instead. I know lots of artists are good, lots of artists are progressing nowadays, especially in quarantine, lots of artists are productive. But this is not a competition. Have it at your own pace, at your own time, at your own mood. Productivity doesn't measure your worth, it's okay to just exist sometimes. Also, whenever you make art, always think that it will make you improve and it will not make you overshadow others. Stop the mindset that you need to overshadow others because that's not gonna help. Focus on improving yourself and you'll do better.